Hi, this is Dr. Toby, your host on Health and Wellness with Dr. Toby, inviting you to watch our show. Coming up with Dr. Noel Gardner. She's a professor at the Heinz College in, J in Jackson, Mississippi. She's the head of department for chemistry at the Utica campus. She got her PhD from Jackson State University and her undergrad in the chemistry field from Fort Valley University. She's a proud HBCU, married for 10 years, a Christian, spirit-filled, tongue-talking, and she wants to share with us how to crack chemistry. Some of you are paranoid, some of you are petrified, some of you are perplexed when you hear the word chemistry. She's going to break it down and show you you can achieve your dreams. You don't have to be left in the lodge and try to dodge the bullet. No, chemistry can be your best subject. Listen to her. I'm sure you'll have a change in mind, and it can set you up for the rest of your life. Looking forward to you joining us on our show, Health and Wellness with Dr. Toby, on this station. Looking forward to hearing from Dr. Noel Gardner. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hi, this is Dr. Toby again, your host on Health and Wellness with Dr. Toby. Thank you for tuning in. Don't touch that dial. We have a great show on our show today with you, Cracking Chemistry with Dr. Noel Gardner. Dr. Noel Gardner is a head of the department of the Heinz College in Utica, Mississippi, in the department of chemistry. She obtained her bachelor's from Fort Valley College, I believe in Georgia, and then her PhD from Jackson State University in chemistry and under 40 African-American female that's a rarity and she's pursuing her goals and um, she shared her heart with us last time about her love for chemistry but she has a love for other people as well and I thought we could talk about that as well as we pursue this cracking chemistry because it all has a lot to do with who she is so give us an idea of growing up in your home give me an idea what was it like growing up in your home? Was your dad, uh, you said he was, you said your dad and mom were medical technologists. That's correct. Okay. Uh, so uh, we had a very strict uh, home. Uh, we had a good time, but when it came to education, that was first. Um, there was no playing around with education, no TV throughout the week. Unless wait, wait, wait. No? No television. No television. Wait, wait, wait. Like <laughs> zero. Zero amounts of TV, unless you finish your work. But most times, because we, we're doing so much that we didn't finish our work. So there was pretty much no television throughout the week. Except weekends. Weekends, that was when we watched television. Yes. Wow. So, um, and my dad was a very, very strict um, disciplinarian. So, um, for example, just, you know, you may do your work, you know, you're writing it out, and you smudge the paper. Um, and you would have to do it all over again. There was no smudges on any paper or paper. So that was, that's what taught me that, you know, perfection, however, we're not perfect, of course, but um, it taught me that I, I could not turn in or do half work, um, or I have to do my best every time. It has to be the best um, possible. And that could be a kryptonite for some students uh, because a lot of students, they have a difficult time, you know, they want to make sure everything is perfect. However, to a certain extent, you have to be careful. A uh, very thin line, but you want to do your best at all times. So that's what I learned from that. So were they working for the government or the private? Oh, no. Uh, they worked for a, a hospital in uh, Atlanta. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Which they both hospital? worked. Um, my mother worked for Grady, and okay. my father worked for Emory or Crawford okay. Long. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And uh, your siblings, you have one brother, one sister? I do. I have a, um, an older sister, and she is uh, in school now at uh, Boston University. Uh, she's pursuing a dental degree. And uh, my brother is tr still trying to figure out his path. He's still figuring out what he desires to do. I think he desires to go into business more so than well, What did your sister do in undergrad? Um, she was a biology major. Okay. Uh, she um, has always wanted to be in dentistry. Um, she put it off for a while, and now she, you know she said she really wants to go and do her and, and do great things. So now she's in dental school. So I'm very so very proud. You don't of her. think your parents pr 
pressured any of you to go into the sciences? Looking at your sister and you, I mean, both of you went um, into the sciences. There was um, positive pressure. Okay. Positive pressure. Uh, they didn't tell us, you know, per se, what to do. My, my mom, she really wanted me to go into toxicology, but I didn't really want to go into that. Um, I wanted to, to be... Um, I really wanted to be a scientist. That was my desire. Um, I wanted to do something, research science. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I did that. I did that in, when I was in grad school, but I then wanted to go into teaching. So you can't really do both. You have to choose whether you want to do research or whether you want to teach. So, well, Tell me a bit about your grandparents. Was there any scientific heritage from their side of the family? Um, well, what I know about my grandparents, my grandmother, uh, she was a nurse, okay? okay? Um, and then in my... In Georgia? Yes, she was a nurse okay. in Georgia. My grandfather, on my father's side, he was one of the head horticulturists at Howard University. Oh, wow. So he did all the, the horticulture, the plants um, at uh, Howard. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you did have some, you know... Yes. Educational heritage. I did. I growing did. Growing up. Yes. I mean, they set the bar. At least your both parents went to college. Both my parents went to college. Okay. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wow. Yes. Tell me a little bit about growing up in the home. You just give us a nutshell about, I mean, if you say that today in America, somebody will think your dad was <laughs> a, a fascist. <laughs> um, my dad simply wanted us to do our best. Um, he wanted us to just be the best that we could be, and he knew that. Um, he's, my dad's an avid TV watcher, by the way. He loves television. But when it came to education, he was not, no, you, your education comes first. It's very, very important. And he knew that because education is something that no one can ever take from you. It is something that you can constantly add on to, but no one can ever take it away. They may can take away other items, other things, but they cannot take away your, what you've learned. And actually, for those of you who don't know, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends no screen time for any child under two. That's correct. That is very correct. And then correct. after two, it's one hour mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. I think somewhere along the line, they hit two, two hours a day. But if you look at the COVID and the lockdown, I can assure you, kids are watching screens. They are, they are on those and screens. And when we say screens, we mean cell phones, laptops, iPads plus yes. television boxes. So All of those. You can imagine how many hours of screen time <laughs> the kids of the United States in 2020 are having. It's I'm sure they have a good amount. Um, but we did not have that much screen time. Um, we, we did a lot of coloring. We did a lot okay. of uh, things with our hands. And I think that's what made us extremely creative. We're, we are creative. We were very creative children. We always had imaginary things going on. We built forts and things of that nature. We kept it interesting, most definitely. What do you think about, um, so your, it's, a, it's an interesting paradox because your husband, on the other hand, is not a scientist. He is not, and I love that about him. Okay. I do. I love so tell that. tell us how your cross-disciplinary interactions metamorphose. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, well, we met at Jackson State University, and we actually met at a tragic event. We met at a prayer vigil for a young lady named Latasha Norman. Um, she was missing at the time, and we were, um, you know, doing a prayer vigil, and we were a part of a religious organization where we were going to pray at, the, at every hour on the clock, okay? And so we were all exchanging phone numbers um, pertaining to, you know, to help. I had like an extremely early hour. It was like 2 a.m. in the morning. So um, you were exchanging phone numbers from everyone so that they could, people could help, you know, each other to, to get up at that time. So he came to me and asked, you know, would you like me to help, you know, make sure you were awake oh, wait, during your uh, time? And that's how he got my phone number. That was, uh, that was yes, uh, that's how he got my phone number. So yes. what's, what was uh, the organization called? Was it like? um, I think it was a, it may have been the Baptist Student Union, I believe. Okay. Or the, um, we also were part of Reform University Fellowship. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so those were the, the organizations that we were at Jackson State. And she was found? She was found, but she was deceased when she oh, was wow. found. That's yes. Tragic. It, it was. Okay. So that was how both of you met. So yes. what attracted you to him, if I may ask? Um, 
my attraction to my husband was different from most. It was not, uh, not that he's not a nice looking guy, because he is, but it was his relationship with Jesus Christ that really attracted me, his character, um, his leadership skills. Those are the things that I uh, looked at uh, the most because I knew guys who um, had money or had intelligence and, you know, but all those things didn't matter. Um, your character, your relationship with Jesus Christ, those are the most important things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So was it love at first sight? You said what attracted you to him was his spirituality. Yes. So it wasn't the it, looks no, per se. No, not per se. Okay. Um, it was definitely... You it didn't was, have this picture in your head of God, this is who no, I want. No, no. I, I mean, I did. I had, I had that. I had that. But... <laughs> That was not what God had for me, you see. Uh, he gave me what I needed more so than what I wanted. So I appreciate what him gave me what I needed. Um, but uh, no, it was definitely not love at first sight. I despised him. I did not want anything to do with him. I was in a space in my mind where I, it was just me and the Lord. And I didn't want anyone to interrupt that time. And there he comes along messing up my time with me and the Lord. But. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. So you've been married now for 10, maybe seven? Ten, ten. 10 years. That's awesome. correct. Tell us about your experience. A lot of people, you know, 10 is a lot in America today. I mean, it is. It I is. think we must give you kudos for that because many people don't live beyond the average. I think most people don't get out of the first year. Yeah, that's, you know? that's very true. So I think you are a worthwhile, veritable source of knowledge for <laughs> my viewers who yes. want to get married and stay married. So is marriage difficult? Have you been able to weather the storm successfully? Is it, is it a, was it an easy ride for the last 10 years? Was it a difficult ride? And either way, what's your reason for saying either I, it's easy or I difficult? would say it has been a roller coaster ride. Um, and, and on a roller coaster, most people put their hands up and they scream and they holler and they have a great time. Uh, so it's it's been a roller coaster ride. It has been happy times and sad times, and happy times and sad times. But regardless, um, what has held us together is our relationship and our, our bond with Jesus Christ. That's the core that holds us together. Um, so for the marriages that uh, don't last, you know, I hate to see marriages not last. I hate that. Um, but I do understand because it does take work. So you go to work every day and you come home and do your, you do your next job, which is your marriage. Mm -hmm. So it is a constant, um, you're constantly changing it. As individuals, we constantly change. You know, we grow, we may like something one day, we may not like, we're not like it in the next. Uh, so we have to continue to grow together in a marriage. You have to make sure you are constantly make, uh, getting that time to grow together. That's what's most important. So, I mean... I must say this, African Americans have the highest divorce rates in the country. That is very true. Let me not even say divorce rate, but the highest single parent rate. Yes. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, statistics show that 80% of African American children were raised by a single parent. Yeah. Okay. Sam? And I'm just trying to put this out there in mm -hmm. the community. So you're an African American female, been mm -hmm. a professional, married for a couple of years. Some people are looking at you and they're like, well, she's just lucky. She's just a, a rare breed. I know. And so my question is, is it, that, is it that luck? Is it that we are looking for luck to determine outcomes? I mean, why are African-American females single? Why are they raising their kids alone? And I'm not trying to stigmatize, but I'm trying to say, is there something that we as a community can do to improve the longevity mm. of our relationships and raise our children mm -hmm. in a two-parent home? Because some people have actually said the reason why we have such dysfunctionality in some African-American homes is because of the single-parent epidemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other side of the question is, was it something you got from your nuclear family? or his nuclear family. Because I've heard people tell me, oh, the reason why I'm not married is because my mom wasn't married, my dad wasn't married, so I just continue that tradition. Mm -hmm. And again, that's what I've heard. I don't know if it's yeah. a, a statistic that is real. I, I understand that. You know, there are some marriages that have, you know, I know some marriages, some people have been married for 30, 80 years, 
and they are the most miserable in their marriage. Um, and then you have those who, you know, are not married, and they it's a choice that they've made to not be married. You know, it's really hard to state what the reasoning is behind, you know, the single single parent situation that we have here. Um, but what I will say is that every African American does not grow up in the same environment. You know, they see different things. We all have seen different different things, um, and sometimes those environments. Um, help us to make the decisions that we make okay uh, so for example some people let's say they saw this their mother was single and they they just decided to be single you know but although i may have i'm different because what i what i saw because i see a lot of this i have family members who are the same way you know we i have different different types of family members but i saw single parents you know all around me i saw them i had cousins who come from single parent homes um, uh, all types of things, but I made a decision of what I wanted, and I didn't want that type of life. I didn't want um, to live like that. I wanted something different, and I went and I searched for that thing that was different. I did not allow uh, situations or my family, um, anything, mm. to deter me from what I desired. My mother, she was the same. She came from a, for the most part, a single parent home. My mother did, so she chose to not live that way. She didn't want that for herself, so she chose to get out of that environment and to mm. to move forward. She didn't know how to do it because she didn't have any, you know, no one to show her. But she had to make different decisions than what everyone else around her was making, and that's what I have done as well. So desire is a big player. Desire, you have to have yeah. the desire to push forward, and even the, I would say past desire. Um, you have to have desire and resources. You do. You have to have a, a passion uh, to not live a life that someone else has lived. That's, it has to be a passion of yours. Uh, it has to push you forward. It has to propel you to go into another area that you don't even know about. So I know you're on public TV, and I know the questions are very personal, but mm -hmm. how was your dad and mom growing up? I can tell you my mom and dad have been married for 51 years. Mm -hmm. And every time one of us got married, my dad would call you and say, you know, divorce is not even on the table, right? <laughs> <laughs> he said, there's no back door out of this marriage. You're well, in it forever. <laughs> I mean, so when he, he, he and my mom have been married for 51 years now, mm -hmm. 52 going on. So we grew up in that environment. Mm -hmm. So if my sister comes to me tomorrow mm -hmm. and tells me I want to leave my husband, I'm going to be like, you missed the boat. You you missed the boat. The boat <laughs> left 50 years ago when our dad made a rule <laughs> that there's no back door out of this thing. No back door. So in, yeah. in your own, I just want to get your own personal experience. Okay. Um, my mom and dad, um, they have been married, I think, coming up to 30, 38 or 39 years, I think, at this point in time. So they were always... Um, they always pushed us to, they, they never pushed us to marry. They never, they never did that. But I do remember one particular conversation my dad uh, had with my, with my husband. And my, my husband went and he called and he said that he desired to marry me, okay. And he called him um, and told him, well, you know, if you decide to marry her, you know, there's a few things you have to know. You can't give her back, okay. There's no, there's no you know, giving her back to us she is yours you know that's it there's no back and forth type of situation um you have to pay bills you have to do all these things we just want you to know those things we have to, I would, he, you know my husband's like well I, you know i'm i know you know i can't <laughs> say give her back but <laughs> but he said i just wanted to say that so that you'll be aware um so i mean we we had a, a really good relationship uh, when we were younger um lots of fun in the house but education once again that always came first um they, they were once again strict as planarians, but we still had chances to have fun. We did. Uh, we had a lot of exposure, um, a lot of different places we went just to see, um, just to just to get out of the house to see what the world has to offer. Yeah. We didn't go uh, too far in the world, but we just went to different states and you know whatnot, just to see what was um, out there. Experience different cultures. We tried different foods. You know, which is the reason why my palate is so so wide range. I can eat pretty much anything. 
Um, so I had a I had a lot of good experiences in my my childhood. Mm. I did. So if I was to suggest, so you weren't brought up in an extremely wealthy environment. No. I but you that. were not lacking in basic. Things. We were not. No. Okay. No, we were not lacking in in anything for the most part. My father had a job for each child, so he had three jobs. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of him, but I knew he was very a present. You know, mm -hmm. um, he was mostly sleeping when I saw him, unless he was off. But um, we had pretty much everything we needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. We didn't have everything we wanted, but we had everything we needed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me a bit about your husband's field of interest. I know he's studying for a PhD in, in ministry. He is, that's true. And um, you might end up being a pastor's wife one day. That is very true. So what's your, <laughs> how are you preparing yourself to be a first lady <laughs> if it happens to happen? Well, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, when you got married, obviously, you knew he had a call of God on his life. Yes, I did know that, yes. So you knew that tomorrow might make you something in ministry and Absolutely. leadership position. Well, you know, Dr. Mama, I believe that God never puts anyone together that unequally yoked, okay? So, you know, I knew, I've never seen myself per se as a first lady. I've never, you know, and me and my husband, we talk about this all the time. But, you know, I am who I am by the grace of God. So I'm not, you know, when I think about a first lady, I think about someone who sits in the front with their hat on and they have people around them and they're just, you know, pretty and they're, you know, <laughs> you know, just sitting there, you know, and I don't, I, I, now you're stigmatizing. Right. <laughs> yes, not I, all, I, I, not, all not all, but, you know, when I, when I was younger, I would say that's what I would see. <laughs> But that's not, you know, at all who I am. And that's not at all who all first ladies are, right? But in my mind, that's what I saw as a first lady. But I'm very active in the church. I'm very active. So I, I can see myself, you know, doing lots of work, okay. um, you know, by his side. You know, not, I wouldn't just be sitting there. So I think we would, we would be a good tag team. Now, you haven't talked at length about the spiritual raising the found so did, tell me a bit about your how when you woke up in the morning was that prayer was that bible study or was it just work hard do good love so, your neighbor because there's different kind of homes that's right no prayer uh, my home was like yours my dad was extremely strict yes and he wasn't religious mm -hmm. he loved god mm -hmm. but he wasn't religious yeah, no. now my mom liked to bring in some of the religious part my of mother as well so my father he, i wouldn't coin him as a religious man um you know my mother however she went to church and you know she did all the traditional things um when it came to church but um prayer in the home i never really saw except we over food um you know that was pretty much it no bible study at home nothing of that nature but um we knew that we had to be at church on sundays and also at bible study um, so we, we did those mom. things. Yes, with my mother. Your my, dad. My father also, he, he would go. Okay. But I wouldn't, per se, coin him as a religious man. Um, he, he went, you know. Um, he's now more into the faith now, but he was not at the, at the time when we were younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was just a... Um, so it was kind of a, let's use the word, non-affiliated upbringing. I mean, you... You, you knew the Sunday school. Right. But, I, I mean, I would say that. So right. to be honest, Dr. Moma, I would say I, I was more so a fan of Jesus, more so than who, knowing who he really was. Okay. I didn't really have a relationship with him. I did go to church all of my life um, when I was younger. Uh, I had an upbringing in the church, but I really wouldn't say that I was truly knew who he was. I knew his statistics. I knew, you know, what he did. I knew all the miracles he did. Right. Um, but knowing exactly um, who he was. Who he was, no, I wasn't aware of that. Wow. Yeah. Give us an idea between Atlanta, which is a big city. It is a big city. And Jackson. Tell yeah. us, <laughs> give, give us an idea. What's the difference? What do you like about both uh, cities? So. What's the difference? I mean. To be honest, you know, I get this question a lot from my students. Why would you go from Atlanta to Jackson? Like, that would be a horrible move. But for me, I wanted a slower pace of life. Um, I wanted, I love the country. I've always loved the country. I never loved city life. I never have. Um, and I guess maybe because I've experienced it most of my life. But um, 
there's some people who absolutely love being, you know, in the midst of things, being in the city, being in the know-how, you know, all the movement. But I just wanted, I wanted a slower pace is what I desired. I did. A slower pace of life. But was Atlanta dangerous? Was Atlanta just no, busy? I was wouldn't it? say it was dangerous. Not for me. I would more say it was extremely busy. Um, I saw my parents work their selves to the bone just to, you know, make sure we had what we needed. Um, both parents, my mom and my dad, I, we spent a lot of time by ourselves. Um, I remember my mom, you know, especially during the summertime, I, my mom, she, she worked and my father worked. So I just remember spending a lot of time alone or spending a lot of time at summer camps, which are great. But I think I, I desired more time with my family. But like in the country, you have this backyard with, Five right. Acres. Exactly. Did you have that in Atlanta? No, no, we did not have that. Uh, we did have land, but we didn't have a whole lot of land because okay. um, we stayed in the suburbs in Atlanta of Atlanta. So there, there are areas in Atlanta where there's you know a lot of greenery. Um, so I stay more, more so in the suburbs of those areas. So we had land. We saw you know animals. We saw you know deer and whatnot. But it wasn't as country as I desired. And you went to an integrated school, so you were constantly seeing other Caucasians, Indian, American Indians. No, I can't Hispanic. say that. Um, I went to a majority African American school. Um, it was a. But the high, the college you went to was it mixed though? It was not. Fort oh. Valley State University okay. is an HBCU. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I I did not go to. Um, I mean, I saw a lot of with our. Our different activities we did. We did a lot of. We played a lot of soccer. We played um, a lot of instruments. So we had a, a lot of exposure with all races. But our schools were predominantly um, black schools for the most part, uh, just because of the area that we lived in. It wasn't per se that was our choice, but it was the area we went to. Private schools that were predominantly black. Um, you went to private schools. We did. We did. Okay, that's a big deal. I yeah. Didn't realize. Okay. Yeah, we did. Do you think that makes a difference in a child's educational pursuit? Um, we went to private and public schools, and I'm glad we had that experience because um, I know the differences between the two. I got a good foundation in a private school, and I did had a great foundation in a public school as well. Mm -hmm. I think you need both. I think you need both to balance your social economic portion there um, and your education. So it's, I think it's very important to have, if you can, to do both balance if possible. Both. Right. Wow. Yeah, to have that balance. So we've been sharing with Dr. Noelle Gardner her heart on education, chemistry, growing up in Atlanta, moving to Mississippi, living in Utica, Mississippi, and uh, how, how she met her husband and what attracted him to her to him and him to her. And it's been an awesome story. We're going to come back to chemistry next week. She's going to open some things that will help you pursue your goal in chemistry. You don't want to miss it. Look forward to you joining us then. Thank you so much. Don't forget, Jesus is Lord. God bless you.